The Nix ecosystem stretches so far and wide that for the average beginner even the task of choosing where to start may seem daunting. And so in this video we will quickly go over the key concepts and tools that the Nix ecosystem has to offer without diving deep into the code to help you understand how they connect and interact with each other. So without further ado, let's get straight to the exploration. Starting with the most obvious one, the central tool of the entire ecosystem, the almighty Nix package manager. Created over 20 years ago, it has gained an enormous following of fellow nerds thanks to its unique approach to dependency management and its easy-to-use declarative packaging model. Because unlike other popular package managers like apt or pacman, Nix does not comply with FHS. Meaning whereas with most other package managers you will find your installed binaries in slash bin and your libraries in slash lib, with Nix everything will be installed into a special place called Nix store. With the usual system-wide Nix installation, you can find it under the slash nix slash store directory, and here, every package lives within its very own isolated environment with its own directory structure. This approach helps Nix avoid the so-called dependency hell, and of course, allows you to install many different versions of the same software simultaneously without any conflicts. All of that is great, but of course, the primary feature that attracts people to try out Nix is usually its declarative approach to installing, removing and creating packages. Let me give you an example. With package managers like apt or pacman, the process of installing packages is imperative, meaning you are installing packages one by one, which often leads you to forget which packages you installed for what purpose and makes it very difficult to reproduce your setup if you were to move to another machine. With Nix on the other hand, the process of installing packages can be compared to modern programming language package managers like npm or cargo, where each one of your dependencies is listed in a file, which not only allows you to easily reproduce your setup on a new machine, but also makes the process more explicit and clean. But to use such declarative approach, you'll need one of the tools that we're gonna talk about later in the video, so let's return to it in a moment. But for now, the Nix package manager is available on most modern Unix operating systems, meaning you can try it out today on your Linux, macOS or even Android device. And now, moving on to the next important citizen of the Nix ecosystem, the Nix language. Invented specifically to be used along with the Nix package manager, it is a very simple pure functional programming language which looks what I can only describe as JSON with a sprinkle of functions. It has all your usual data types like integer, float, string, boolean, list and attribute set, but also includes path because its primary use case is declaring packages. And to Nix, everything is a package. Your Python application is a package, your development shell is a package, or even your entire operating system can also be described in a package. So if you are planning to do any declarative configuration, you will have to at least learn the basics of it. But fortunately, like I've said, the language is so small you can literally learn it in under an hour. However, on its own, the language is really not that useful, because obviously, to create any package, you will usually need some dependencies and Nix functions that describe the build process. So if you don't want to implement all the packaging logic and dependencies from ground up, you will have to get familiar with the next citizen of the Nix ecosystem, the Nix packages. And judging by its name, you can probably already tell that it must be some sort of package repository, but Nix Packages is more than just that. Hosted on GitHub, Nix Packages is a repo that not only contains an impressive collection of over 100,000 software packages that you can install with Nix, but it is also basically a huge general purpose Nix library filled with all sorts of useful Nix code, from package builder functions to functions that manipulate data types or download stuff from the internet. Because to declare anything from programs to shells and NixOS configurations, you will need to use specialized builder functions. After all, the process for building and packaging a Rust package is vastly different from a Python one, and the same concept applies to everything else, like shells and NixOS configurations. So to package a Rust program you will use a Rust function, to create a NixOS system you will use a NixOS system function, and to create a development shell you will use a shell function. And the code produced by these functions will later be interpreted by Nix to build these packages and put them into your Nix store. And now comes the part you've all been waiting for, because the next citizen of the Nix ecosystem we're gonna talk about is Nix OS. So Nix OS is a Linux distribution that uses Nix as its primary package manager. This allows it to benefit from the declarative configuration on a system level and makes the entire operating system reproducible from Nix code. 
Meaning whereas on a normal Linux distro, you would use shell commands to install packages, enable services or configure programs, on NixOS everything imaginable can be declared with options. This approach makes any changes explicit, so you'll never forget which commands led to your firewall settings being changed or how certain programs appeared on your system. And if you wonder where these options come from, well the answer is very simple, once again, Nix packages. Because like I've said earlier, to Nix everything is a package, and NixOS systems are no exception. Just in this case, the function that builds the system package is abstracted within a NixOS rebuild command, and the option declarations still live within Nix packages as part of its logic. Of course you can also define your own options, but that's a topic for another video. Anyway, so since every time you rebuild your NixOS configuration you basically get a new system package in your Nix store, NixOS allows you to activate any of the previous generations straight from your bootloader, ensuring that updates and accidents in your configurations won't lock you out of your system. And all of that is possible because every Nix package simply references other packages from your Nix store when it needs dependencies. Meaning if you add Firefox to your NixOS configuration, Nix would see it as your system package having a dependency on a Firefox package. So if you rebuild your system without updating its version, it will still reference the same version of Firefox from your Nix store. Which is exactly why you can have hundreds of NixOS generations with just the slightest modifications without it affecting your disk space much. And now speaking of updating, what does updating actually even mean with Nix? And while I'm oversimplifying a lot here, updating with Nix is basically equivalent to updating your locally installed version of Nix packages. Because by default, after you install Nix or NixOS, you will also receive a copy of the latest stable Nix packages branch, also called a stable channel, where all your packages, functions and NixOS options will come from. And updating this channel or switching to another one will also bring you new versions of packages, NixOS options and any other Nix code contained within Nix packages in general. So if you build your NixOS configuration, then update your channel and build it again, you will see that Nix will start installing fresh new packages for it, but the old generation will still have references to the old versions of packages since the packages in the Nix store are isolated and don't try to kill each other. But NixOS is not the only way to achieve declarative configuration. Because Nix Darwin, Home Manager and even Nix Shells essentially work in a very similar way. Nix Darwin is like NixOS but for your macOS devices, Home Manager is like NixOS but for your user directory on any distro, and Nix Shells are these temporary terminal environments where you can also install specific packages and set environment variables with each one of them providing you with a certain scope for declarative package installation. That was the general summary, but of course the rabbit hole goes infinitely deeper than that, because everything I mentioned today can easily be extended, automated and combined. Which brings us to the last topic for today, the extensibility of Nix. Because Nix ecosystem wouldn't be what it is today without many amazing projects that surround it, with Home Manager and Nix Darwin being just two of the examples. And if you want to find more, the best place to start is the Nix community page on GitHub. Here you will find many awesome projects like Home Manager, the declarative home directory configuration framework I mentioned before, NixOS generators, which allows you to build NixOS configurations in various formats, Disco, which lets you format disks declaratively with Nix, NixOS VSL, which enables you to run NixOS under the Windows OS, Impermanence, which provides you with far greater control over persisting your system's state, Nix init that generates all package boilerplate for you, and URL that generates Nix fetcher calls for you, and many, many, many more incredible projects. By the way, the easiest way to dive into these projects is by using Nix Flakes, so if you're curious about them, be sure to check out the Flake video on the channel. And if you're still hungry for even more learning after all of this, then let me introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing interactive learning platform that offers engaging lessons across technical fields like math, science, computer science and more. With their growing library of programming courses, you can both dive into Python and start building real-world programs in just one day. And the best part is, the skills you will learn are very much transferable to any other programming language. Since Brilliant teaches you all the essential programming concepts from loops and variables all the way to more complex conditional logic, meaning alongside Python you will actually learn to think and code like a real programmer. 
Plus, with the lessons being interactive, you will get the perfect mix of theory and practice, proven to be 6 times more effective than traditional video lectures. And if studying on a desktop is not your cup of tea, fear not, because Brilliant also has an amazing mobile app that you can take with you and learn something useful on the go anywhere you want. So start your 30-day free trial now at brilliant.org slash vimjoyer or by scanning the QR code on the screen and enjoy a 20% discount on an annual Brilliant Premium subscription. And now, I'd like to thank all the amazing people that support the channel and keep it going, starting with the great monthly members. And since the last video, we have one more monthly member, but I'm not sure how to pronounce your username, so if you're watching, let me know. As you can see, this section now looks slightly different, because there's so many members now, it takes more than a minute to get to some names. So let me know what you think, and I can of course change it back to the previous, more flashy version if you all don't like it. I'd also like to thank everyone for the generous recent one of donations. And of course, let me know what you think about this thing. It's just a little experiment right now, but if you'll enjoy it, I'll try to polish it and hopefully use it in the future videos. And as always, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.